There have been several whistleblowers reporting that satanic ritual sacrifice is at the highest levels of our society. Midsummer sets us free. <laughs> Ritualized is, after all, the ultimate expression of tyranny. And as disturbing as it is to most people, it has commonly been used as a form of blackmail. Former child actor Rick Schroeder recently released a video of a childhood experience he had in Hollywood where he believes he met members of this cult. Let me explain. When I was young, I couldn't drive yet. Uh, I was hanging out with the older guys. Uh, and I'm in Point Doom and... Somebody popped in a cassette tape into a VHS player and there was a room with a body, I believe it was a male, laying on a table and uh, people came around the room, it was dimly lit, but they had hoods and robes on and uh, they had some sort of ritual where they took out a knife and they cut him down the side. and. They took out parts of him and the blood started flowing and they were chanting and um, some, there was women there and they took off their clothes and then they took the blood and they smeared it on their bodies and started to be sex with each other. It was uh, quite disturbing to see. And so, uh, they gave me the cassette and I took the cassette to somebody I trusted and I, we watched it and uh, they said, never watch that again and give it back to whoever gave it to you. So I did that, but I was always confused about why they didn't ask where it came from. And so, I believe that I met some of the cult members when I was younger. If in fact we have no accountability or justice, it could be because these people that are supposed to bring us justice and protect and defend the Constitution are corrupted by this cult. I have no fear of them. You know, I only fear Jesus. And so. Perhaps whoever's investigating these folks needs to go, we need to go a layer below the top and come up from the mid-level who are not cult members, or been blackmailed by the cult possibly because uh, that's the only explanation I have for why we haven't had accountability and justice for what they've done to America and continue to do to America while we all just watch. So I share this with the hope that those mid-level people that are investigating in the FBI and the CIA will understand that their superiors perhaps will never give us justice because of the level of blackmail involved. All right, that's off my chest. That feels better. Now you all know. God bless America. And God bless those trying to defeat this cult. In Jesus' name, I give you this message. Amen. And when it came to the ceremony itself, Megan said the experience lasted three nights and was, quote, incredibly intense. Everybody's journey is different. The second night, I went to, to hell for eternity. Um, yeah. And to just knowing eternity is um, like t torture in itself because there was no beginning, middle, or end. So you have like a real ego death. And Megan says the ayahuasca was able to help her in ways that therapy and hypnotherapy couldn't before. It just goes straight into your soul and it takes you to the psychological prison that you hold yourself in. So it's, it's your own version of hell. And I was definitely there. I'm, I'm also interested in religious experiences and for one reason or another, and it's a bottomless mystery. Um, there are agents that reliably produce religious experiences. 
and no one knows what in the world to do about that. That's for sure. Talk about a strange trip. It's mind blowing. Megan Fox gets candid about drinking ayahuasca with Machine Gun Kelly in Costa Rica. It's hard to top that one, man. The Till Death actress appeared on Monday's Jimmy Kimmel Live with guest host Arsenio Hall and opened up about her quasi-spiritual journey in the Central American wilderness with her boyfriend after drinking the psychoactive tea used in ceremonial rituals as a spiritual medicine, which BTW induces auditory and visual hallucinations. Do you guys know what ayahuasca is? Oh, yes! So we went to we went to Costa Rica to do ayahuasca like in a proper setting like with indigenous people and I was thinking it was like glamping or something like that it's still going to be like a some kind of five star experience and you get there and you really are in the middle of the jungle and you don't get to eat after like 1 p.m. you have to walk a very far distance to get your water you can't shower because they're in a drought nothing glamorous about it it's all a part of sort of making you vulnerable so that you surrender to the experience you know, and it's certainly the case that, like, I firmly believe that the world is not the way we perceive it. It's deeply, it's deeply strange. And I do believe that the hallucinogens reveal that. Um, there's a narrative aspect to it. There's a religious aspect to it. There's an, a meaningful aspect to it that we don't understand. We can't understand it scientifically, or we haven't been able to. The scientific viewpoint excludes that to some degree. And I think the best evidence for that probably does come from hallucinogenic experience. Now, people have, clearly, people have a biologically instantiated religious instinct. Now, it's possible that that only speaks of our peculiar biological nature, that it doesn't reflect broader reality as such. But if you go deep enough into the psyche, what you, it becomes increasingly difficult to separate what you discover from reality. Now, it's not, people can clearly have individual subjective religious experiences. Most scientific phenomena are objective. Many people have to experience the phenomena at the same time. You have these religious experiences that can be induced by hallucinogens, let's say. Each person has their own particular experience, but everyone has an experience that's similar. And we don't know what to do about that category of experience. And then, you know, we think in stories and we see the world through a structure of value. I think that's, I think that that has been proven beyond a doubt by neuroscientists and psychologists. And the fact that we see the world through a prism of value seems to indicate that there's something about value that's real. And so, that's partly why things are deeply mysterious. I mean, Rick Strassman, he terrified himself right out of the DMT research, as far as I could tell, because all his subjects came back and said, well, you know, I went somewhere else and saw aliens. It's like, well, it was a dream. No, sorry, wasn't a dream, it was way more real than any dream. In fact, it was actually more real than life. Well, what do you do with that? I mean, it, it's, it's beyond comprehension. Our culture grew out of the Bible. It's grounded in the Bible, for better or worse. And so if you want to know who you are, and why you think the way you think, like you think you know the way you think, you think you think, you don't. Or very rarely. Like the thoughts, thoughts are greater than you are, in some sense. I mean, and it's very rare that you don't think that you think something that someone else hasn't thought. You know, I, I can't remember who said it. it might have been Alfred North Whitehead that you know, everyone's the unconscious proponent of some philosopher. They don't. You know, everyone is the unconscious proponent of some philosopher. So, anyways, the deepest values are religious, and our religious document is the Bible, and the Bible is an absolute mystery. Um. The deepest questions are religious questions, and the Bible is the best answer we have. And if you don't like that, well, fine, do better. Good luck. <laughs>